Thank you and uh, welcome to SmartTech web seminar on uh, integrated structural health monitoring systems for buildings. I am Roberto Balder, uh, Buildings Application Line Manager in SmartTech. So before we start, just a few instructions uh, on uh, how to follow this uh, seminar. So you should hear my voice through your PC speaker or headset. Uh, you can ask questions using the uh, questions panel on the right of your screen and we will answer your question uh, in the, uh, the questions panel uh, at the right uh, side of your uh, screen and also at the end of, uh, of this presentation and uh, uh, possibly also by email after the uh, presentation. And then later you will receive uh, the, uh, the link to download the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation of the, uh, the presentation with uh, speaker narration on the multimedia player together with some uh, relative data sheets. The uh, contents of this presentation will be on a structural health monitoring of buildings, so a few methods, uh, the technology and a few application examples. At the end, there will be some questions and answers to be followed. So there are uh, different uh, types, different kinds of uh, buildings that uh, need uh, monitoring. Uh, mainly are high-rise buildings that are made by steel, by concrete. There are large buildings that are located in, uh, in seismic areas. There are also critical buildings <coughs> that usually host uh, uh, people, uh, the population, like hospitals, uh, schools, uh, power plants, and there are also sports uh, arenas and uh, stadiums. There are also large commercial buildings like uh, malls, uh, like shopping centers, and also historical buildings. But uh, these kind of buildings will be treated in a separate uh, web seminar. So the, uh, the aim and benefits of monitoring buildings are different. So first, uh, monitoring uh, confirm the uh, design parameters. So the detection of damages can be used to discriminate uh, deviation from the uh, design performances. The structural management uh, allowed to, uh, to postpone the uh, repair, the replacement, while making sure that the structure doesn't degrade further or quicker than the expected. So it's possible to have a controlled lifetime extension of, uh, of the structure. Then monitoring assures the, uh, the quality of the structure. So it provides the information on the quality of the material used during the construction, during the operation, and the maintenance and repair. With a monitoring system also it's possible uh, to detect uh, <coughs> degradations uh, like cracks that are uh, caused by the nearby heavy traffic, uh, by works uh, or by ex exceptional natural events. A monitoring system assesses also the real conditions and the possible degradation of the building so it provides more reliable data on the actual conditions of the structure and it's possible to detect uh, the appearance of new degradations uh, such as uh, concrete cracks, uh, creep, uh, corrosion, steel crack uh, due to fatigue loading. A monitoring system can ensure the integrity, the safety of the people, nature and properties so it will save lives and property in time by stopping for example the exploitation and the access to the uh, structure itself. Uh, the monitoring will assess uh, the, uh, the building safety uh, after a major event, so after extraordinary natural events such as uh, earthquakes, strong wind, storms, blasting, and it's possible to understand uh, whether the safety of the building has been seriously compromised. So uh, we will have information about the safety of the, of the building that will help uh, the, uh, the managers to take the right decision 
about the reoccupancy of the buildings themselves. Then uh, a monitoring system can increase the knowledge uh, on, uh, on the complex buildings, so learning how a structure performs in real conditions, this will help to design better these structures for the future. So using, for example, new materials, new construction technologies and methods in order to, uh, uh, to understand the real behavior and to refine uh, the behavioral theories. So monitoring system can also implement uh, prestige to your structure. So a state-of-art monitoring system can be a very important added value to the, uh, to the structure itself. The, uh, the monitoring will reduce also the insurance and the maintenance cost, so it will decrease the insurance premiums and the maintenance cost for possible damage on people and on properties that are caused by unexpected failures. And finally, uh, the, uh, the monitoring earthquakes shaking can really reduce uh, uh, loss of life and properties, especially uh, doing some uh, uh, dynamic analysis. Uh, monitoring will, uh, <coughs> will give information about uh, on how earthquake damage begins and progress. Uh, uh, it will evaluate uh, the earthquake resistance design and improve methods for uh, predicting the seismic performance of structure. And finally, uh, the uh, good monitoring system can uh, re-upgrade the uh, seismic safety provision of building codes. So monitoring is, uh, is a periodical or continuous record of parameters over a certain period. And the, the parameters that uh, are to be uh, monitored might be mechanical, you know, like strain curvature, might be physical, chemical, like the corrosion, or might be the condition of the environmental, of the environmental uh, conditions uh, around the, uh, the structure. The frequency of the monitoring can be uh, periodic, uh, continuous, dynamic, and the level can be on the material level, on a critical member scale, on a more global scale, or on a network scale. For example, a few structures that belong to the same network can be monitored at the same time with the same network. Uh, when approaching uh, a project, a monitoring project, is important to uh, define the most critical elements of the building, like the, uh, the pile foundations, like the, uh, the vertical members, the columns, like the horizontal members, uh, beams and slabs, uh, and uh, like the, uh, the cores, so uh, the stiffening members, uh, the, uh, the brace frames, uh, and the exoskeleton or the skeleton itself. Uh, the, uh, Following the strategy is also important uh, uh, to, uh, um, to select uh, the most critical elements and this is of course also a cost issue and uh, we uh, typically recommend uh, to select the most uh, uh, characteristic piles for the foundations and to select also the, um, uh, the most characteristic columns and cores at selected story of uh, the building. So there are different sensor topologies that can be used to instrument a building. The simple topology uh, allows the uh, simple uh, uh, strain uh, monitoring. The parallel topologies allows the, uh, to calculate the, uh, the curvature. And then a cross topology allows to, uh, to measure the, uh, the shear uh, strain. So depending on the requirement, we can uh, select uh, the, uh, the most suitable uh, sensor uh, topology. Uh, talking about uh, piles, uh, using a single topology in piles it would be possible to measure the axial force, uh, compressure, uh, pull out uh, in, uh, in a pile having uh, a chain of uh, single sensors. Uh, with a parallel topology it would be possible to, to measure the, uh, the bending uh, to measure also the, uh, the deformation and the, dis the uh, displacement of the pile if we know the, uh, the boundary uh, 
conditions. Uh, having uh, uh, three uh, parallel sensors, uh, it would be possible also to, to measure the biaxial bending of, uh, of the pile in uh, two directions. And to do this, uh, we need a minimum of uh, three cells, so on the top, on the bottom, and possibly also in the center of, uh, of the pile. For building, uh, it's important uh, when uh, we instrument columns to have uh, uh, either a single or a parallel configuration in order to uh, detect any uh, axial strain or bending of the pile. And for the core, uh, it would be most suitable to have uh, a cross uh, uh, configuration to, uh, to detect any shear and also a single conf configuration uh, to monitor axial uh, compression of, uh, of the core. Uh, there are also uh, two approaches when uh, instrumenting building. So the first one is, uh, is a more, more local approach. So we, uh, we study the, uh, the material properties of, uh, of the material that is used to, uh, to build uh, the, uh, the structure. And then the, uh, the other approach is a more global approach. So we, uh, we, we do a correlation between uh, different uh, members, between the different uh, columns of, of, of the building and uh, the information will uh, tell us uh, about the, uh, the global behavior of the entire uh, structure. So the typical components for, uh, for buildings monitoring are uh, a system which is based on uh, brag rating. Uh, what we need uh, is uh, a readout unit uh, together with an optical switch and then uh, we can read uh, uh, strain sensor, deformation sensors that are located, for example, along a tower at a certain level. So it, it is possible to measure the, uh, the strain, the bending of the tower. Then we can add uh, some accelerometer uh, to measure the acceleration, the vibration, to calculate uh, the, uh, the mold shape of, uh, of the structure. Then a few inclinometers. Uh, to, um, to measure the uh, inclination, the rotation of the structure. And then if it is necessary, we can also add uh, a laser distance meter to have some absolute uh, measurements, uh, for example, uh, to see if there, is, uh, there are some settlements of the tower or some rotation of, uh, of the structure. And then in the end, we can also add uh, a weather station uh, to correlate uh, the, uh, the effect of uh, the environment. Uh, to the, uh, to the measurements and make some, uh, some data analysis, some data interpretation about the, the effect of, uh, of the um, envir environmental conditions like uh, the wind, the wind speed, uh, the rain and so forth. The, uh, the softwares are also uh, supplied with, uh, with the monitoring system. Uh, so the, so the software will, uh, uh, will allow to store storing the measurements, to do the, uh, the calibration, and uh, uh, from both fiber optics sensor and also conventional sensor into a single uh, database. The software is also capable uh, of calculating stress, uh, strain, and setting alarm levels for single and multiple structure elements. The software will also allow to uh, visualize uh, uh, measurements uh, superimposed on a drawing, for example, or on a picture of the different instrument sections or levels of the building. And then there is uh, a dedicated software for, uh, for a dynamic analysis, so the uh, response model identification software in order to calculate uh, you know, the damping evaluation, the, uh, the mode shape uh, evaluation, the frequency evaluation, and so forth. So here are, there are some application examples. So the first one uh, is the, uh, uh, the high-rise uh, monitoring buildings in Singapore. This is uh, an updating of uh, this uh, ongoing project that was started in uh, 2001. And uh, the, the project is, um, is carried out uh, in cooperation with the Housing and Development Board in Singapore 
which is uh, who is in charge of the construction of the residential buildings in Singapore and the aim was uh, to assure the, uh, the quality of the buildings uh, to increase the, uh, the safety, to increase uh, knowledge uh, on the structural behavior, to verify the uh, construction process, to optimize the, the maintenance uh, cost and to verify the conditions after major uh, events. So up to today uh, we have instrumented more than 250 buildings that are equipped with uh, more than 2,800 sensors. So each uh, building is equipped with uh, 8 up to 10 sensors. So the sensors are embedded in the, uh, in the uh, most critical columns of the building. So here you can see the, uh, the position of the columns and the columns have a different cross section from, uh, uh, from each other. The, uh, the sensors were embedded in the, uh, the columns. The columns were, pre were precasted or uh, casted on site. And here you can see the, uh, the sensor that is uh, attached to the, uh, the metal rebars, uh, the extension cable, and also <coughs> the junction box uh, in order to uh, connect to make the measurements um, to, from the sensor. So the, uh, the first approach in this project was uh, to assess uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, the material properties. So it's, a, it's an assessment at a local level. So a single topology was implemented uh, having one sensor embedded in the, in the column. So it was important to, <coughs> to correlate uh, the, uh, the measure strain with the expected uh, uh, values uh, from the uh, design of the building. Here we can see a typical, uh, <coughs> uh, a typical result of uh, material evaluation. So this is uh, the strain uh, components of the column C3 and column C9. So we can see uh, the, the first line here above is uh, the uh, design, uh, uh, the estimation of the shrinkage, uh, then uh, this is the uh, estimation of the creep, uh, this is the estimation of the uh, <coughs> elastic, uh, elastic strain, and this is uh, in the end is the, the total uh, design uh, value, and here you can see <coughs> the, uh, the measured strain, the total measured strain, and actually, there is a, a good agreement uh, between the two, uh, the two um, uh, results, and this will indicate that the, uh, the performance of the column follows the numerical calculus. On the, other on the other hand, on the column C9, we can see that there is a, a deviation between the, uh, the measure strain and uh, between the design strain. And this will indicate that the, the column number C9 was overdimensioned for the, uh, for the purpose that uh, it was supposed uh, to do. Uh, here we can see a 48 hours session on a single column from year to year. So we see uh, the behavior of the column in 2004. And then we see the evolution of the rheological effects like uh, uh, creep, like uh, concrete shrinkage after one year. And then also in 2005 up to 2006. And we can see that in 2007 the results are very similar to the uh, results of the previous year. And this will, uh, uh, will confirm that uh, the, uh, <coughs> the rheological effects that were affecting the, the column are almost uh, over and uh, there is uh, a kind of uh, stabilization uh, of this uh, uh, phenomenon. The other approach that was uh, applied in this project was a more uh, global approach. So different columns were instrumented with uh, different uh, sensors and uh, the, uh, the results of each uh, columns were correlated to each other. So the purpose was uh, to see if uh, there is a differential settlement of the entire building. And here we can see some uh, interesting results in unit uh, A. So we see that the column C1 was uh, <coughs> more loaded and uh, uh, performed a larger, a larger strain. So you can see uh, the, uh, the column, this is one, the C1 that was uh, 
more loaded. And then the, the C3 column was unloaded and the, actually the strain decreased in absolute, pardon, in absolute strain and uh, we can see even a decompression of, uh, of the column which is actually a settlement of the column number C, C3. Then uh, with a numerical model it was, it was possible also to calculate the, uh, the value of this settlement that was uh, of the order of uh, approximately one millimeter. And then finally this is a, a unique uh, information so it's a, a long-term information over more than seven years. So we, uh, we started measurement in 2001, so at the very beginning of the construction of the building till the end of the construction. And there you can see the, uh, the behavior over uh, seven years, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, phenomena, different behavior, behaviors that are due mainly to, again, to some rheological effects like uh, differential creep like differential shrinkage of, of the concrete and also due to the uh, to the temperature to the ambient temperature that uh, starts also to affect uh, the uh, <clears throat> the behavior of uh, of the columns here also they perform uh, some 48 hours for every year so it is interesting to <clears throat> correlate uh, you know the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the measurement uh, of every year and correlate to the previous year and see if there, uh, there are some deviations from the previous measurements. They also measure some, some tremor, so before the tremor that happened in 2005 in Asia and after the tremor and uh, the, uh, the results uh, indicate that uh, the, uh, the structure was, uh, in a, in a, was in a good shape, so the integrity of the structure was assured thanks to, uh, to this uh, uh, monitoring, to so these measurements uh, that were taken uh, over a long period. So at the same time uh, there are also other projects that uh, uh, are to be carried out in the, uh, in the, same, uh, in the same area, in uh, the Duxton area. So this is the Pinnacle uh, buildings that was also instrumented in the, uh, like the, the previous ones in the, in the pies and here uh, with uh, 26 sensors we uh, <clears throat> instrumented the uh, four longest link bridges that are linking the, uh, the buildings. So the purpose was uh, to, uh, <clears throat> to, to have a global analysis of, of the bridges uh, and by a numerical model to analyze the performance and the behavior of uh, those uh, uh, structures. So here we, we see that uh, the sensor were installed on the uh, on the steel uh, on the steel struts in a triangle configuration to monitor the deflection of the structure, and then also two additional sensors were installed on the on the diagonal steel struts uh, to monitor the axial force. We are going also to uh, to have an automatic system, so it would be possible to. Uh, to gather all the information from, uh, from a building monitoring center. So both uh, sensors that are in the bridge and also the sensors that, that are in the columns, the information will be collected by an automatic reading unit and the data will be, uh, uh, will be gathered at the, the center of building research which is uh, at 20 kilometers from, from Duxton and uh, the, uh, the initial communication will be uh, via GPRS and then afterwards it will be uh, via fiber optic cable uh, when uh, the, uh, the telecom line will be completed. So this is uh, an interesting project that uh, it will be implemented this, uh, uh, this year in uh, Singapore. Then there is also an interesting project that has recently uh, completed. This is a, a building that is made by recycled concrete aggregate. So 24, 28 sensors were installed in the, uh, in the columns, in the, uh, in the critical members, and two sensors in the cantilever structure of this, uh, uh, these new buildings. So the uh, the purpose uh, was uh, to monitor the behavior of the columns after uh, subjecting to, uh, to live load 
and also uh, to assess uh, uh, the, the behavior of this uh, new building uh, material uh, performance. This is uh, a high-rise building in, in Japan. It's uh, 147 meters of height, which is located in Toyosu, uh, which is a region in uh, Tokyo, in the Great uh, Tokyo, and is a region that has been reclaimed from the land, from uh, reclaimed land from from the sea. So the aim of this uh, uh, project is uh, the uh, evaluation of the structural condition after the completion of the construction, after earthquake, strong wind and ground sinking. So we perform both static and dynamic uh, measurements. So 20 representative columns were uh, selected and were instrumented with uh, one meter long gauge sensor together with also thermocouples uh, to correlate the effect of, uh, of the temperature. So here we see that uh, <clears throat> five columns were instrumented uh, on the second floor of, uh, of this building. And uh, here again we use the uh, single topology uh, because it was not really necessary to use a parallel topology because the uh, dominant load in each column was only compressive normal force, uh, so a possible bending was almost uh, neg neglectable. This is the uh, the top view of the uh, of the second floor of this uh, high-rise building, and you can see the, uh, the the position of the columns that have been uh, uh, equipped with uh, uh, with this so with the sofa sensors. So here there are some. Uh, uh, some preliminary, very, very preliminary results. So here we can see the, uh, the strain of the five, uh, of the five columns uh, uh, in uh, relation to, to the variation of the temperature and uh, we can see uh, an agreement uh, between uh, the, uh, the variation of the temperature and uh, the, uh, the axial strain measured in the, in the columns. Uh, this is the uh, the calculated compressive normal force in the in the column. We can see that uh, uh, during the period one and period two, uh, respectively, two uh, cranes on the top of the building were removed. So we can see that there is a, a decompression of uh, of the columns, and then we can see <coughs> some further behavior that uh, most likely are due to the, uh, to the temperature, to the temperature variation, or also to some unloading, unloading of uh, some heavy machinery or uh, some other materials needed during the construction of this building. This is a, a dynamic measurement during a windy day on the same, uh, on the same building. And uh, the, uh, the sofa sensor was able to detect uh, a very small dynamic strain uh, below uh, 0.5 uh, micron with a wind velocity of uh, 15 meter per second. So he actually they made also a comparison with a traditional acceler accelerometer. And uh, this uh, actually shows that uh, the, uh, the sofa system was really able to detect uh, really very, very small dynamic uh, uh, strain. Uh, what it was not able uh, to detect by the, uh, the traditional accelerometer. So here we are also again in, uh, in Japan. This is the uh, Nikkei Sekei Spiral Tower in Nagoya. This is uh, a futuristic tower with a spiral shape of 36 floors over 170 meters of height. Uh, the tower is made by glass, steel and concrete. So the, uh, the center core of this uh, tower is, um, is made uh, by uh, a rigid uh, uh, cylindrical structure that is made by some truss uh, tube pipe that are filled with uh, uh, concrete. Then the, uh, the, the pipe have some braces that are deployed around the, uh, the core. The tower has also a mass damper system to uh, restrain some seismic vibration. And the aim of this uh, monitoring 
uh, project was to improve uh, the, uh, the knowledge on the structure behavior of complex structure and also to verify uh, the recalibration of the uh, numerica models and performances of new material. So altogether 30 SOFO sensor deformation were embedded into the concrete and also mounted on the, on the steel pipes. So both dynamic and static measurements were carried out. So here we can see the installation on the, on the core of uh, this uh, building. So the, uh, some sensors were installed on the surface of the pipe and then the others were embedded in the, in the concrete inside this, uh, this tube. So this is uh, the, uh, the position of, uh, of, the, uh, of the tube that are filled with, uh, with concrete. This is uh, another project that we did in, uh, in Italy, in, uh, in Cosenza. It's called Skyline Skyscraper and it's a building of uh, 25 floors over 75 meters of uh, height. And this is actually the, uh, the, the tallest building in the, uh, in the southern part of Italy. So here they install almost 100 deformation sensors that they were embedded in the, in the columns of the building skeleton. Uh, the scope of this uh, uh, project was to know the real evolution of the tensions, magnitude, strains and possible uh, cracks uh, in the columns during the construction and also uh, during the operation of the structure. Also here dynamic, uh, dynamic measurements were, uh, were taken and in particular during uh, spatial condi conditions such uh, strong wind and seismic activities. Here we are in, uh, in Korea, in Seoul, and this is the, uh, the, the new headquarter of the uh, Hyundai uh, industry, the Hyundai building. This is a, a twin tower of 35 floors, which is linked by a metal truss bridge. Here 12 sensors were installed to monitor the abnormal strain and vertical displacement of this bridge during the construction and the service of uh, the, twin, the Twin Towers. Okay, and finally, uh, this is uh, <clears throat> an arena. This is the uh, Halifax Metro Center in, uh, in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in, uh, in Canada. And this is uh, a construction of the late 70s and it's a, a multi-entertainment sports facility and also exhibition center in, uh, in Halifax. So the, uh, the problem with this uh, arena was the, uh, the roof loading. So the, uh, there is a superimposed dead load on the, on the roof. Then uh, there is a, a load that is due to entertainment uh, uh, devices like uh, audio visual uh, equipment and also the, uh, the snow caused by uh, the load sorry, the load caused by some snow falls during the, the winter time. So the reason uh, to, uh, to monitor uh, this structure was to evaluate uh, the, uh, the roof loads and the induced stresses uh, due to the snow loads and due to the suspended loads for special events like a concert, like a sport event. And also to evaluate uh, the, uh, the possible need uh, to strengthening uh, the, the structure due to the change snow load cause. This is the uh, instrumentation. So also here we use uh, a fiber optic system based on uh, bra grating te technology. So the, uh, the deformation sensor were installed on the, uh, on the metal uh, struts in order to, uh, to monitor strain and bending of, uh, of the trusses and then together with the, uh, the strain sensors also a laser distance meter was installed on an independent place in order to also to monitor absolute movement of, of the truss and to, uh, to monitor the possible deflection from an external point of view. So all the, the system were uh, connected to a central measurement point in order to gather all the information and uh, the, uh, the data for uh, 
uh, for setting some uh, uh, some warnings and alarm uh, in order to <clears throat> to have information about the uh, the roof uh, behavior. So this is the uh, the installation of the sensor. So the sensor were uh, bonded on the on the steel truss. So the sensor had also some some temperature uh, gauge in order to uh, to measure the temperature and to compensate the temperature effects. Then we can see the the central measuring point and the the Robovec that is it is installed on an independent uh, <coughs> uh, beam inside the uh, the uh, the arena. Okay, and here we can see some uh, some results. This is a, a, a snowfall event in December 2007. So it's the, uh, the, uh, the strain levels of one sensor in the, in the truss uh, C. And uh, we can see the evolution of, uh, of the strain due to the, uh, the snowfall. And the, uh, the, data, the, uh, the data that are uh, recorded uh, are well below the, the strain limit. Uh, so uh, this uh, <coughs> shows that uh, no retrofitting was needed uh, uh, to, uh, to improve uh, the, uh, the safety of, uh, of the roof. And here we can see some combination of uh, uh, strain that are caused by some concerts and also by some snow and heavy rain uh, falls. So this is a, a plot of uh, a data plot of two strain sensors on the on the truss A that were measured uh, between January and February two, uh, 2008. So we can see that uh, on uh, on this uh, sensor we can see that uh, uh, during the uh, Ozzy Osbourne concert uh, uh, they started to uh, to load the equipment on the, on the roof. Of, of the arena, and then there is a peak that is uh, actually during the uh, the concert, and then you, we can see that uh, just a few hours after the uh, the concert, uh, they started to remove uh, the equipment. So you can see that the, the strain is going to be uh, to uh, to reduce. And then uh, uh, this is a second concert, uh, two days, uh, two evening after, and. Uh, we can also see a combination on the same time at the same time of some snowfall and freezing rain. So we can see some peaks that are uh, caused by uh, by the load of of, of the uh, of the snow. And then after the the concert is finished, we can see that uh, they started to unload all the equipment from uh, from the roof. And then you can see also uh, another concert uh, that was uh, by Michael Bublé. And here again, you can see the unloading phase, the peak of the, the real concert on that evening, and then the day after, or just a few hours after the concert, they started to unload the, uh, the material from, uh, from the roof. So the, uh, uh, the, the results are, uh, are, um, are good because uh, the, uh, the threshold level was set uh, at 75% of the maximal allowable strain level. So the, the situation was under control and uh, the, uh, the arena was, uh, the integrity of the arena was assured by, uh, by this uh, uh, system that was implemented. Okay, thank you for, uh, for your attention. Now if you have some, uh, some question, uh, we can uh, reply to you uh, there is a, a chat uh, a chat line on on the right side of your uh, screen or we can also answer to you uh, immediately or we can also write to you later on yes <clears throat> so there is a question why many temperature sensors uh, <clears throat> So this is, uh, I think it was for the, um, for the application in Canada. Uh, well, the, uh, every uh, strain sensor was supplied also with, uh, with a temperature sensor. And this uh, not only to, uh, to detect the, uh, the, uh, the temperature of the air, 
but also to compensate the temperature effect on the uh, on the strain sensor itself. So it would be wise to have always uh, the strain sensor that are compensated by by the temperature. And having also temperature sensors, this will uh, uh, will be also more, more important for uh, for static measurements. So it will uh, really help a great deal in the correlation in the uh, uh, analysis of the data uh, for uh, for static measurements. Okay, thank you again, and uh, we are we are looking forward to uh, to join us uh, with the next web seminar. Thank you, and bye bye.